Hi, my name's Nick Muller from Advantage Business. Welcome back. And today we're talking about people. People are the biggest cost on your balance sheet, and they're on your, sorry, P&L, and they're also the biggest asset in your business. And they also can be quite difficult to deal with from time to time. So today we're gonna to talk about getting discretionary effort from your involvement with your people. So leveraging other people's talent and ability. Now the thing is, I talked about this earlier in my leadership blog, video blog. The people are most happy when they're productive, when they're working on the stuff that suits them and that they like doing. And that's not, not always easy to accomplish when you're setting up a business because quite often there's stuff that people don't like doing that they need to do. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is behavioral styles. When you're a self-employed person and you get to this and you start to want to make the shift across to becoming a business owner and have your business work for you, what happens is you're at this ceiling of complexity and on the other side of the ceiling of complexity there is um, some growth. Okay, so we, let's just say we're, we've reached a certain point and we're having trouble growing. We need to shift our business from being me focused as the business owner or the leader in the business to being a we focused scenario where, where there's a team producing the results, not just me or a few people in the business. So we need to almost detach ourselves from being the person responsible for running the team and have the team have peer accountability within the team so people are res the team's responsible for producing the results and us included it's just a slightly different shift in terms of a subtle shift in terms of how we're operating so when you've got a team game the team works best when they have structure and they're accountable so you've got accountability and it's consistent with their behavioral style. What I mean by that is working to strengths. So when you're organizing a team, you need to understand who's good at what. Okay, so some people are naturally wired more technically, and some people are naturally wired as more people people. And in a sales environment, some people are just more naturally wired to go and hunt down new business and some people are better wired to be account managers. So you don't try and put somebody who's a hunter and, and get them into, a, um, into a, an analytical scenario where they have to analyze too much because it just drains them of their energy. And quite often we use this tool called DISC. There's a whole lot of, uh, which talks about dominant, influential, systematic and compliant behavioral styles. And there's a whole lot of tests out there that HR people use as part of the recruiting process to make sure that they get the right behavioral style and the right function in the business. So that's, that, that's the first thing. So people play uh, are most happy when they're playing to strengths. Now sometimes they aren't able to completely play to their strengths the whole time, fair enough, because you've got a business and there's reporting that needs to happen or uh, there are other things that need to happen within the business in order for it to function at, uh, effectively. So you build structure around the person. So you have structure for the function. Now quite often what happens is people hire somebody, they hire a GM thinking that GM is going to bring all the systems with them and that that's that problem solved and now I can just exit the business and go and live on an island somewhere. And that's, that's all good. It'd be nice if you do manage to find the GM with all of the systems already with them. Now, more often than not, that doesn't happen that way. We're actually, as a business owner, responsible for identifying the missing systems and um, implementing them in the business. So this is where the structure uh, comes into play. One of those structures is a strategic plan that everybody buys into or an operational plan that everybody buys into, or leading KPIs that everybody buys into. Their particular KPI might be uh, actual versus 
quoted in terms of time taken and for productivity for argument's sake. Or it could be uh, conversion rates, or it could be number of calls if you're going to go back to a tradi traditional business model and sales for argument's sake. And accountability. So the shift needs to happen, this very, very important shift needs to happen in accountability when you're shifting from self-employed across to a business owner way of operating. So you're trying to reduce the amount of time you spend in your business and still produce the results, right? So you're reducing the time and you still want the results to happen. So who's going to be accountable for what and is it going to all land on your shoulders? Now if you don't manage to shift the accountability onto the people that are looking after or in the best position um, who, and have control over that particular function, you're not going to get freed up. And what, so one of the ways is to have a, a KPI you can measure, get the system into place so you can measure the number of times it happens and uh, work with that person, coach them and work alongside them. And this is transformational leadership, not transactional leadership. Transformational leadership is about supporting people to, to hit their goals and to accomplish whatever they're committed to. So my suggestion is, and that's just, that's just a couple of examples, my suggestion is that to get the best out of people and to have um, the discretionary effort working for you and your business working for you, have your people on board productive equals happy, have the right people in the right seat, have the right structure in place for them and create peer accountability. So understand team dynamics and, um, and implement that in your business. Thank you.